You know, the world is looking for an eternal touch. They might not know it, but that's what they're looking for. It's called eternal touch. Everyone look to your neighbor and say, eternal touch. We need it daily. <laughs> Romans 8. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Things are happening, man. There's a stirring, there's a quaking, there's a shaking, there's a deliverance, there's a healing, and there's a freedom. <laughs> Jesus is in this room. We don't have to wait anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 8, 18. Eternal touch. Everybody there? For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Are you going through anything? You better be. You're going through it. Amen? Amen. <laughs> it means you're not stuck there. But the enemy likes to get you stuck there. So you get into woes as measies, right? Amen. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Who is that? Us. We are the, so everything is waiting for me and you. Think about that. So many times we say, well, I'm waiting on God. And that's cool. But sometimes God is waiting on us. See, there should be an expectation every time we gather. An expectation of what? A change. A change. I want to change every time I get in God's presence. I want to change. And I want to exchange. So I can't change unless I exchange. So one of the things I'm exchanging is I'm exhaling every demon or anything that's come on me. Hello? I'm exhaling staleness and getting refreshed with the fresh presence of God. It says, For the creation was subjected to fertility and not willing, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope, for why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance or endurance. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. That means there must be a yielding there. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered or understood. Now he who searches the hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So when you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying the perfect will of God. You're actually making intercession for yourself and for others. We know that all things work to the good. Hmm. To those who love God. If you love him, you obey him. To those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed. Everyone say conformed. And to his image of his son, that he might be the first born among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. Now, I want you to grab hold of something because it's powerful. This could not happen without an eternal touch. Does everybody get it? Eternal touch. You know, we go through sufferings, challenges, 
in this realm called present time. I want to say present time. What is present time? It's a place, influence of corruption and bondage. Present time is a place influenced by corruption and bondage. That's what this place is. It's influenced by corruption and bondage. It is called the present time. We groan for an eternal touch. Amen? We groan for an eternal touch and change that stops satanic forces. Frees the oppressed and strengthens the human weaknesses. I'm going to say it again. What does this eternal touch do? It stops the satanic forces. It frees the oppressed and strengthens the human weaknesses. There should be a deep cry for mercy, each and every one of us. What is mercy? Consider me. Consider me. When you cry out for mercy, you're saying, consider me. Amen. What are you considering for? We should cry out for deep mercy for the divine touch of his glory, his power, his might, his love, his majesty. To sweep us into an eternal presence of freedom and joy. You and I are predestined to be conformed into his eternal image. There's something important. It's called cooperation, which we've heard multiple times. It's cooperation with a continued eternal touch of God. So there should be a constant desire within me and you, that mercy that cries, it says, touch me, change me. Melt me, mold me, reconnect me. Every time we get in God's presence, there should be that cry. That's why we worship. We don't want to leave the same. We need to be empowered against the forces of darkness in Satan's kingdom. We need to break every bondage of oppression. And we need to be strengthened in our inner man. And every time we gather together. Amen? And we know that the price is cooperation. We'll talk more about cooperation in a minute. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are cooperating with the eternal realm. We are cooperating with heaven. It's God's desire that the kingdom of heaven be manifested on earth. But it manifests through the body. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. <clears throat> Everybody there? For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavenlies. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Now wait a minute, I remember somewhere in Genesis about somebody being found naked. Why? Because the presence lifted. Amen? The eternal presence of God was removed from Adam and Eve, and they tried to cover themselves because they recognized they were naked. For we are who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Therefore we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be what? Well pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body and according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 
Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are well known to God, and I also trust are well known in your consciences. Clothed with heavenly habitation by the eternal touch, it removes us from shame and nakedness and guilt. It removes us from cooperating with the presence of evil known as sin. Again, it takes cooperation. What is cooperation? Cooperation is submission to a perfect order. It's a perfect order and sanctification of divine counsel. So you and I are to cooperate to the perfect order and sanctification of the divine counsel to, to, to perform divine duties of grace. We are to perform divine duties of grace, which is God's plan. And expression of the divine nature of Christ. Again, submission to a perfect order resulting in a change of priorities from self-priorities to divine priorities. This is whether you know you're there or not. This is whether you know you're in that position because your selfless priorities are no longer in order. They're out of order. Amen? They are removed. This is whether you know you are touching or being touched by the eternal presence, that eternal touch that brings a change, that eternal touch that brings conviction, that eternal touch that brings sight and hearing, that eternal touch that breaks the heart, that eternal touch that you and I need all the time, every day, so that we can fulfill vows, so we don't look back, so we can perform divine duties. Everything must be in divine priorities as a new creation in Christ and performing his character resulting in from a divine touch changing perception. Changing perception. Changing view of something. It brings understanding. It brings discernment. It brings direction. It brings accountability, it brings responsibility, and it brings discipline, and I'll repeat it. Again, when that eternal touch comes, it changes perception. We see things differently. Our priorities are different. They're no longer associated with self, they're associated with kingdom. Brings understanding, brings discernment, brings direction. Of course, it brings conviction, doesn't it? One of the fruits of it is accountability, responsibility, and discipline. This is a place of consistency all the time. Again, we are in cooperation with is actually submission. It's submission. The word says submit to God and you can reject, refuse the devil. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 9. First Corinthians 9. Eternal touch. Such two simple words, but powerful. See, so many times we lose sight of the area of eternally, which is the timeless place. God is always trying to connect us in there and keep us connected in there. Cooperation is total submission, but it's submission to the eternal order, not according to the temporary order. In other words, your priorities are changed. They're changed. And priorities and guidelines never 
change. They don't change. They stay the same. Eternal priorities are the same. They don't change. Circumstances change. Just like a routine, your routine doesn't change. But you can bring your routine and your job and you can bring it everywhere else. But in this, our priorities are so essential. When people's priorities are out of order, they're out of line, they're out of time. I see so much of this. Selfish priorities compared to kingdom priorities. That is, see, only when there is truth, cooperation, and submission is priorities put in order. When they're not put in order, then there isn't true submission. There's not true cooperation. And that means that there's a lack of eternal touch. 1 Corinthians 9.24. <clears throat> Oh, hallelujah. First Corinthians 9, 24, let's speak it. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for a what? Imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I what? Discipline my body and bring in its suggestion, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become what? Disqualified. There's a lot of disqualified witnesses out there. We run the race according to the rules that are related to discipline and it's a disciplined order that God has predestined for me and you. It's called an eternal order. It has an eternal priority. It's called kingdom priorities. When priorities are out of order, that's lack of eternal touch. Amen? We become disqualified. Please grab hold of this. Priorities out of order will disqualify you. Always. Because if you're out of God's time, you're out of order. Amen? If you're asking for something from God that's not time, you're out of order. Does everybody understand this? Amen. See, there should be a relationship where you know. You're not going to challenge God. Gosh, I hope he might give me this. That is called disrespect. Amen. If there's a true relationship, you don't ask for things you know you haven't earned yet. Or you're out of order. First Thessalonians four. First Thessalonians four, chapter one, or verse one. Let's speak it. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more. In other words, abound more and more to him. So that's going to result in cooperation and discipline. It's going to result in more eternal touch from God. Just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. Can you please God without a touch from him? No. You don't get enough touch from him, you begin to lack. You begin to drift out of order and priority. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification 
that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of laws, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage and defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. In other words, each should know how to possess his vessel in cooperation with the Spirit. Why? He leads us into sanctification. I'm going to say it again. He leads us into sanctification by conviction, by chastisement, by rebuke. And causes self-examination. He leads us into sanctification by conviction, chastisement, rebuke. And causes self-examination. And that exposes our disorder. The disorder according to the priorities in our life. So there must be an eternal touch that's not only received, but then obeyed. A touch doesn't just come with a touch. There's always a touch and a direction. There's a touch and a conviction. There's a touch to bring things in order. And when things are to be put in order because they're supposed to be in Priority. Everybody all right? Luke 9. So many times we we're looking at acts of sin instead of things of priority. Does everybody get it? Look at the priority of Christ. He had a priority. Everything was set in order. That's called priority. According to the eternal counsel, not Temporary counsel. See, when we were in the world, our priorities were different. It was self. I want, I need, I desire. I will not. <laughs> and I wish. There's a lot of those going on. Prior to being saved. We don't wish anymore. Amen. Amen. So Jesus gave us a true order of priority. Luke 9, verse 23. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And I'm telling you, he is talking about everything about priority in our lives. So many times we're looking beyond that. We're looking at Actions of sin and this and that and whatever is our priority according to the divine order, the eternal order of Christ. If it isn't, then we're lacking a touch. We're lacking connection. Amen? He said this, for, whatever, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? And whoever is ashamed of me in my words and of him, the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory in his fathers and of the holy angels. Wow. Deny self is empowered by an eternal touch which empowers us to say no to selfish agenda order. Selfish agenda 
order, which is things out of priority. Our first priority is relationship with God. First, 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 first. So in our relationship with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in our relationship with Him, our first priority is His presence. Amen? It's His presence. Because you can't have a relationship without His presence. That means you need an eternal touch as much as possible. Our second priority is God's timing. These are priorities that you and I should have. Our third priority is God's approvals of what choices we make. In this, he recognizes, he sees, he checks out everything. How is your priority in everything of your life? How's your priority in finances? How's your priority in character? Conduct? How's our priority? What is our priority? Do we have a priority of tithing? Giving to God? Amen? It's amazing how many people's priorities are out of order they, in fact, some of them go way out of order when they become a Christian. They, they can just do whatever. They go out and buy clothes when they can't pay rent. It's amazing to me. They want all kinds of things and they still haven't paid child support yet. That's out of order. There's just so many things that are just out of order in people's lives and they think that they're in order. When God searches every little thing, the word says a little leaven, leaven's a whole lump. Amen? Loans. People have old money, yet they're going out and buying all kinds of other stuff and not making a payment. And they want God to bless them. We ain't going to bless if you're out of order. Those priorities are out of order. Yes, I know you got to have food and clothing. Amen? You got to have uh, uh, transportation. But that all comes in God's time. So many people run to the phone, want a phone, before they even do anything else. It's out of order. And you know what? If we're close enough to the Lord, we don't even ask for it. Let me tell you, after I had my visitation from the Lord, I was delivered and healed. When the Lord restored me and my wife, I didn't ask for nothing. You know why? I had him. I had everything. I didn't need anything. I needed a ride once in a while. But I didn't ask. She offered her car. She was crazy. <laughs> she trusted God, not me. <laughs> but it's amazing how many relationships get back together after breaking covenant, and then they're requiring the spouse to give them things. That's out of order. Totally out of order. Your order, number one, is God and God's presence. Without this, you're out of order. Amen? Amen? So we need to allow that conviction to come. Don't justify. If you've got to justify something, you better be careful. Amen. And don't blame somebody else for your stupid mistake. Amen? Amen. Take responsibility. Why? Because it will put you back in order. Forgive me, Lord, for being an idiot. Second Timothy chapter two. These are things that the Lord looks at. These are things that we either earn as trust or lose it. He's trying to get his people to advance. Yet they don't advance because their priorities are out of order. They're still self-priorities. And not eternal priorities. 
Boy, do we need an eternal touch all the time, man. And we, when we, we just came back from a place that don't, doesn't really know what eternal touches are. They know now. <laughs> Praise God. 2 Timothy 2. Starting in verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men. Is a faithful person a person of priority? Yes. See, th people think that being faithful is just showing up. No. If your life isn't set in priorities, <laughs> then you're not faithful. I'm talking about divine priority. I'm talking about a priority in your life that pleases God. What is first? What is second? What is third? Are you putting yourself before things that are due? Well, I just won't pay this month's rent. I'll go out. I need to do this, this, and this. I mean, it's amazing how many people. You know, we get calls. Can you help us with your, the rent? Why? Well, um, we bought a car and couldn't pay the rent this month. Well, you idiot. You're out of order. You don't have a place for us to stay? No. Get a stinking job. Get things in order. Get connected to the presence of God. Where do you fellowship? Oh, I don't fellowship. I know. I can't tell you the strangest things in phone calls. People are out of order. Well, I'm a Christian. Oh, really? Who are you shacking up with? <laughs> well, well it's, a, it's a new generation. No, it's called a new age. <laughs> Not a new generation. It's a new age. It's called the age of grace where you're going to hell if you don't turn things around. You don't start cooperating. It's amazing how many people don't know about this. They are still living a life of works, not priorities. Does everybody get this? Man, we better be careful. I, we just left a bunch of people that works. You kidding? I can drink. I can do this. I can do that. I've done this for God. I've done that for God. <laughs> Oh, we own three bars. Woe to you who serve liquor. Strong drink. Oh, well, we pray for people. Huh? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, we put tracks in the bathroom. That's good. I'm telling you, all of this justification. And total priorities out of order. I mean, you know, amazing to me. I mean, I was baffled. But thank God for the Holy Ghost bazooka. <laughs> and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful individuals who will have their life in order and <laughs> priority who will be able to teach others also. Why? Because they will be an example. How can you teach someone without being an example? You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he what? Competes according to the rules. Is divine order a rule? Yes. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. <laughs> Boy, do they need understanding. So you and I must compete according to the rules of the kingdom, living and priorities, not worldly or self-priorities. This is why it's called higher order. We live a higher order now. 
It's not our order, it's his order. It's a divine order of things that pertain to kingdom living. If you notice, I didn't mention family. Why? Because all of that falls into place when everything else is priority. When it's in divine priority, divine order, everything with family falls into place. See, so many times people are trying to think, well, family is a part of this priority. So it's God, church, and family. No, it's not. It's God, God, and God. The family will fall into order. Look at it. If you're close enough to the Lord, you ain't got to worry about it. Amen? Everything falls into place. If it's not falling into place, because you're out of order. Your priorities are messed up. Everybody okay? Matthew 6. Hallelujah. Now, that's one of the things the enemy likes to do is try to get us to drift out of order. He likes to bring fear so that we change the order. Then we put fear as priority. <laughs> Anything that comes by fears will try to change order. Oh man, I need to do this because of money. No, you need to get back in divine order. The money will come. <coughs> Is everybody okay? See, when, when that fear comes in, we try to adjust it ourselves. And when we adjust it ourselves, <laughs> man, we're, when your hand's in something, God's not. Matthew 6, 31. Therefore, do not what? Do not what? Worry. Well, snap. He just said, don't fear. Don't worry. What's the problem? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these, the heathen seek, I mean Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. Hello, he knows you need them. There's a difference between a need and a want. Amen? Although sometimes we say, we need. I need this, Lord. No, that's a want. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be what? They'll be added to you. So you want to seek an eternal touch of righteousness and all things will come to order. Isn't righteousness a part of order? Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because when all things come to order, it's installing divine priorities where you are lacking nothing. So there's no works of the flesh. There's no works of self. Everything's put together. Divine order. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. James chapter 1. Jamesies 1. Glory. Hallelujah. You know, it's like somebody trying to drive a standard automobile. There is a order of shifting. You cannot start off in fourth gear. It just doesn't work, you know? So you have to start off in the first gear, unless you're cruising or second. But you can't start off in fourth gear. You're out of order, and you get a stall. Yeah. 
Verse 2. James 1, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you're falling to various trials. Man, we hear this over and over and over. Knowing that the testing of your connection produces endurance. The testing of your connection produces endurance. The testing of your connection produces endurance. How you connected? Eternal touch. The testing of your connection produces endurance. But let this endurance, this patient, have its what? Perfect work. Let it work. That you may be perfect, complete, and lacking nothing. Hmm. Need endurance to maintain priority, to maintain order. And if any of you lacks wisdom, so he's saying you're going to need wisdom for this, which is divine wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives it to all liberally and without reproach, and you'll be given to him. But let him ask in faith. In other words, when you ask in faith, you receive, you believe, and you execute it. If you're not activating it, then you're not believing it. With no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. And let not that person suppose that they will receive anything from the Lord. Why? Because the enemy will steal it before it gets there. He is double-minded and unstable in all his ways. Listen, if he's double-minded, if this person is double-minded and unstable in all their ways, they are totally out of order. Amen? We need endurance to maintain priority and order, and we need wisdom. Double-minded is out of order. It's priorities. They're unstable. Because their priorities are always changing. That's called instability. That's called double-mindedness. One day God's first, the next day they're first. In fact, they can change that afternoon or that evening. Whatever comes across their path. If money comes across their path, they push God out of the way and they take the money. First Corinthians 1. I can tell you that there is a squeezing going on if you don't feel it already. Why? We need new wine. Yeah. We need new wine, man. First Corinthians 1, verse 18. Oh, happy days. Let's speak it. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For the Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Why? Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise, according to the flesh, not many muddy, not many noble are called. He calls those ones that are out there, man, and turns them into trophies, you know. We were out there. <laughs> now we're in there. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, that the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. <coughs> but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, and what? righteousness and sanctification and redemption. 
that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. See, when our priorities are in order, it pleases God. Amen? And if we're always looking to make sure our priorities are in order, that means your motive must be in order. Amen? Your attitude must be in order. Is my attitude in order today? Is my conduct in order today? See, when a conduct attitude is out of order, it's because there's no order because the first priority is God. Amen? So then the order has changed. Now you're the priority more than God. Now you can speak all about God you want, but if your attitude stinks, you're out of order. Amen? Oh, happy days. Wisdom of the world versus the wisdom of God. See, when people are out of order, they fall back on the wisdom of the carnal wisdom instead of godly wisdom. Psalm 16. Eternal touch, eternal slap, eternal kick. Just connect, will you? <laughs> Get it. Psalm 16. We need an eternal outlet where you just plug in. <laughs> Psalm 16, verse 7. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall what? Not be moved. Hello. In other words, you're not going to get out of order. Things will maintain a divine priority if he's truly in front of you in everything you do. Therefore, my heart is glad, my glory rejoices, my flesh also rests in hope. For you're not going to leave my soul in hell, and you won't allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Set the Lord before us in everything we do. That should be our priority, shouldn't it? That's why we said God is priority. That means you got to set him before you every morning. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Okay, what do you want me to do? Put him in front of you. Then you pray, you warfare, you do what you're supposed to do. You do your routine. And you get, you receive, you make connection. And you... He's going to convict you if you're out of order, if you let him. But you can't justify when that conviction comes. And then you got to repent when you're out of order and not reason with it. You know, Lord, I forgot about that. I need to put this in order. Hello? Forgive me. Because we got to activate the blood for the spirit to be returned to it. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3. Why do people react instead of respond? Because somewhere along the line, they got out of order. Amen? Something's out of order. You're out of order. If you're reacting in the flesh, you are out of order. In fact, you weren't out of order when you reacted. You were out of order before you reacted. <laughs> the fruit of your conduct in the flesh or reaction is showing you're out of order. You better get God back in front of you again. And you better make connection and get an eternal touch so you can get back in order. Proverbs 3, verse 5. 
Trust. Everyone say trust. trust. In the Lord and not yourself. <laughs> trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Listen, things aren't going to always go the way you want or the way you think or even the way you believe. You will get into places where you'll begin to question God in your thoughts. What the heck's going on? You know what? Step away. Because it doesn't matter. You put them back in front of you and you get things in divine order. Amen? Because when you allow that, that means he's got control and not us. That means he's going to fix whatever get, needs to get fixed and not us. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of your increase so your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, verse 11. My son and daughters, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his rebuke and correction. For whom the Lord loves, he smacks. <laughs> Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. So don't run, learn. Amen? Don't get offended when you get caught doing something stupid or out of order. You know, that battle within us is incredible. It's the old man, the new man, the old man, the new man. They're battling for order themselves. And whatever one you allow to yield to is going to put things according to its order. Amen? And you'll either be in order or out of order, and your priorities will be off the wall or divine. Psalm 15, and we'll close here. It's in divine order. <laughs> but, but, but. And there's no excuses in divine order. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. Thank God. <laughs> Everybody wants to tell you what they're going through. When they get things in divine order, they know God knows what they're going through. Isn't that all that matters? Amen. I mean, every one of us has a story what you're going through. We could go through, going through stories all, all night long. And I'm going through this. Oh, yeah, you're going through this. Oh, yeah, I'm going through it. Yeah, you're going through Oh, you're going through Well, go ahead and get through, will you? Just get through and get it over with. Psalm 15, verse 1. Who, woo, woo, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may get an eternal touch? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Who may get an eternal touch? He who walks uprightly, whoa, who works what? Righteousness. Who speaks the truth in his heart. Listen, that doesn't mean you express how you feel. I speak the truth in my heart. I'm miserable. I'm feeling this way. I'm feeling that way. Shut up. <laughs> I'm lonely. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that demonic pizza. You keep eating it. 
He speaks the truth in his heart. Not out of his mouth. Amen? You don't speak how you feel. That's soulish. That is out of order. Now, don't get me wrong, you know. There's times when you don't feel good. Okay, man, I don't feel good, but God's got it. Amen? But don't exaggerate over it, man, and water it till it grows into a tree trunk and a building or a cage. People express it so much, they just build a cage around them. He who walks uprightly works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Well, we know what the truth is, right? There's a difference between fact and truth. The fact is you feel miserable. But the truth is you have the joy of the Lord. You choose it. Why? Because you're choosing to put things in divine order. He who does not backbite with his tongue nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Hello. We need to look at that one. He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. In other words, no matter what's going on, no matter how you feel, you are fighting to maintain divine order, and divine priorities. You are maintaining to keep the Lord before you. You don't care what else is going on. You are not a man pleaser or a self pleaser. You're a God pleaser. Amen? He who swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. He who does not put out his money at usury, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Hello? He who does these things shall never fall out a divine order, divine priority, and won't be moved. He who does these things. Listen, we all need an eternal touch. We're all going through something. Welcome to the earth. Amen. We all want things now. Amen? But if you have him, you have everything. So begin to show him that you trust him. Begin to show him. Quit asking for things you know you haven't earned yet. Don't challenge him to see if he's going to release it. Is it time for this yet? Does it matter? Lord, I trust you. You're my fulfillment. Lord, I trust you. You're my fulfillment. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my deliverer. You're my hero. You're my everything. Heck, I don't need a phone. Lord, you speak to him. <laughs> Lord, if you really want this done, then do it. What can I do to please you today? I'm telling you, every day I ask him, before he releases his commands to me, the first thing he says is, be like me. Be like me. And I tell him, I can't be like you without your presence. I can't be like you without your touch. I can't be like you without you. So I'll be like you if you exchange me for you. And then what do you want me to do? Since I'm going to be like you. Then I can do things in order, divine order and in priority. Please understand, we have neglected this. Priority is essential to him. Essential. High. High essential. What you make priority in your life is essential to him. Essential. Amen. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, have mercy upon us and let your grace abound.
And we ask, Holy Spirit, for your counsel, correction, direction, conviction, and guidance and self-examination so that our priorities are your priorities. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Stay dressed with the glory of God.